everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at PhotoLab 4, and I wanted to uh, examine the presets in PhotoLab 4. There's a lot of really cool presets in there. There's the standard preset, so I wanted to discuss that today. Oh, and by the way, as a friendly reminder, I wanted to let you know that uh, DxO PhotoLab 4 is on sale right now. It's in a special launch price right now, so you can get some really good savings. Uh, if you click on my affiliate link in the description below, it'll take you right to the website where you can download a 30-day free trial or you could buy the product, whatever you want. Uh, when you use my affiliate link, I make a small commission. It really helps my channel out and keeps helps me to keep these videos coming to you. Thanks to everyone who has or will be using my affiliate link. Thank you so much. And now back to examining presets in PhotoLab 4. Let's get started. Let me show you where your presets live. Now, they live in two places that I know of. One place is right up here in the upper right-hand corner of the interface where it says presets. If you click on that, it opens up a preset viewer here with previews and things. And you have different presets in here, like your general purpose presets. Now, DxO Standard, I'm going to be talking about that one in a little bit here. But this is the one that DX... DxO uses by default on your images, and it's a really powerful preset, and we'll talk about that shortly. But you have these different presets under general purpose, like DxO optical corrections only, neutral colors, black and white, no correction. And the one next to it is one that I made for my own purposes. Uh, I made this one when I had DxO uh, Photo Lab 3, so you won't have that one. So in case you're wondering, yes, you can create your own presets in Photo Lab 4, and I'll show you where you do that. Now you can close these presets up just by clicking right up here on the little uh, triangle right here. But you'll notice we have portrait landscape presets. We can click this and open it up and see previews of the different portrait and landscape presets that we have. We also have uh, black and white presets. We also have uh, atmospheres. So they give us a lot of really cool presets in here. And again, you can make your own, and I'll show you where you do that shortly here. And here's high dynamic uh, range single shot HDR type presets. And we also have smartphones, uh, low, low ISO and high ISO presets. And if you happen to own the uh, DxO Film Pack Designer, you're going to have some black and white presets inside of here. And it's, it's pretty cool. I do have the DxO Film Pack. I'll do some videos on that. And you also have color uh, ones as well. So it's pretty cool stuff. It'll emulate different um, types of films and things like that if you're really into uh, the old school film cameras, which I really love that stuff. And then you have uh, a category called DxO1 Scene Modes. And DxO had a camera that they designed called DxO1. I don't know if they still have that or not. You may own one, but uh, they give you different scene modes for that. Next, we're going to pop on over to the preset editor. Now, it should live by default when you first get uh, PhotoLab 4 over in the left-hand side of the interface on the bottom here. Um, so see where it says preset editor, just click on that and the preset editor will open up and you'll see different presets inside of here. All right. Now you won't actually see the previews when you click on these, you have the same presets that you had over here in presets. Okay. And, uh, like there's your DxO standard, uh, DxO optical corrections and so on and so forth. The portrait landscapes, all those are in here. And by the way, this is where you save your own presets. If you make a preset that you like, you can click right here, create a new preset using the settings of the currently previewed image, okay? And here you can create a new preset group, and you can duplicate the selected preset here. All right, so that's the preset editor. If you don't have it, if you come up here in the menu section, and then you click on pellets, you'll see all the different pellets. Now, the cool thing about... Uh, DxO, it's fully customizable. So if you don't like a pellet, you can shut it off. But your preset uh, editor pellet lives in here. And make sure that that is checked on. Because like I said, if it's not checked on, you're not going to see it. So make sure that you have it checked on. All right, now let's move on. Now let's look over here at history. You'll notice right here it says applied default preset. Now that default preset would be this preset under general purposes right here, DxO standard. And that preset is used by uh, DxO PhotoLab by default, okay? And if you come up here to PhotoLab 4 and click right here, and it's gonna be different on a Windows machine, I'm on a Mac, you'll notice your preferences are here, but wherever you find preferences, that's where this uh, 
setup is going to be. So click on Preferences. And when you click on Preferences, you'll notice under General right here, if you come down right around the middle here, it says Presets, Default Preset for New Raw Images. Now, it's set for DxO Standard by default. Now, if you click this drop down, you can use any of the presets you want, any of the presets you make, or any of the presets that come with Photolab 4. But I recommend that you use the DxO Standard. Now, so that's for raw images. And also, by default, it's uh, the preset is for new RGB images as well. So I just leave those on standard, and that works nicely. Now, let's turn our attention over to the History Pellet. And you'll notice we have the applied default preset set to this image. That's the only thing that's been done so far. And that applied preset does a bunch of different things. And I'll show you how we can see exactly what it's done. And this is a really cool new feature of uh, Photolab 4. This is brand new. And that is this uh, active corrections toggle switch right here. Now, if I toggle this off, it's showing you a bunch of different adjustments here. Okay. But if I toggle it on, it's only going to show you the adjustments that have been added to the image. So it's filtering the adjustments and letting us know just what has been added to the image. And every time you add a new adjustment to the image. If you toggle that on, you'll see that in the list of adjustments. So it filters out the ones that have not been added yet, which is really cool. So let's start out and look at this light group and see what this uh, standard preset has done. Because I think it's very important because you're using the standard preset in all your images and you want to see what it's actually doing to your image here. So let's examine that. Under the light group, we can see that uh, DxO Photolab 4 has added the DxO Smart Lighting, which is a really cool adjustment here, okay? And it's in the slight mode right now. Let me toggle that off, and you can see what it looks like without it. And I'm going to, well, I, I was going to say I'm going to turn it back on. To turn it back on, let's go over to History here and click on uh, the first setting applied default preset, and it'll show back up again, okay? Okay. I forgot when this is when this active toggle is on here and you take something away, it's going to go away from the list. So be careful with that. But you can always step back in your history to one step before that. OK, so that's the DxO smart lighting and it's applied vignetting, which and now that vignetting is not like a creative vignetting where we darken or lighten the edges. This is a vignetting where it actually remo removes vignetting and the engineers and the scientists at DxO have done extensive tests on all the different cameras and things. They're the best in the industry on that kind of stuff, lens corrections and all that but they're using their special formulas to give you the perfect vignetting for your camera lens okay and so that's on by default in the lighting section this tutorial today is just about presets and it's really not about how to make the adjustments and things like this but i just want to show you the power of the dxo standard preset and how it sets you totally up for greatness. In other words, it's a perfect starting point to start editing your image here. And this smart lighting is amazing. I'll go over this in another video, but for now, know that it does great things for your image here. And it's just done by default for you. If you have that uh, in your preferences, if you have the uh, standard preset applied to your images. Okay. And now we go to color. And we'll notice in here we have white balance and it's just going to be set up as shot, however your camera shot, shot the image. And then you can come here and change it. And of course, you have all the different settings here that you can change it to. All right. And then we have color rendering. And again, this is the uh, experts at and scientists at DxO that set this stuff up for you. It's set for generic renderings, but it's set for your camera default rendering. In other words, my camera is a is a Canon 5d mark ii so it's set up for my particular camera so it's really cool stuff so that's for color next we move on to detail now for detail we have three different types of noise reduction by default it's set up for hq which is the high quality normal noise reduction and that's going to be fine on images that have lower isos and things like that but a lot of times i'm shooting with high isos like you'll notice like this image under metadata over here in the metadata palette i shot this at iso 1600 it's got a lot of noise in it so i would use the deep prime but you have the hq you have the prime which is really good and then you have the deep prime i don't really see a need for the prime i will use the deep prime because it is the best and next we come to lens sharpness now this lens sharpness will be based on the lens that you're using on your camera what the dxo scientists have deemed the perfect sharpness for your camera and it's all calculated for your particular lens you're using 
as well as the chromatic aberration. So that's all set up for you. And that's all part of the uh, standard uh, preset. And then we move on to geometry. We have a crop here and it's set to auto. We have distortion. And this is based on the DXO module for your particular camera. So any lens distortions, barrel distortions, anything like that has been taken care of by DXO. And I believe the crop tool is there set for auto in case uh, the distortion corrections lose some of the image. The auto crop tool would automatically crop the image for you. And next we come up to the local adjustments. Now you'll notice there's no local adjustments because I haven't made any. We'll do other tutorials on local adjustments, or I will, and I'll show you the power of the local adjustments with the U-Point technology and so on. Great stuff. And then effects is different effects that you can add with uh, DxO Photo Lab 4. Nothing's been applied there. Well, there you go. Today we were examining presets in Photo Lab 4, and we really took a good look at what was going on with that standard uh, preset the DxO standard preset. It's really great. It's doing a lot of lens corrections, chromatic aberrations, setting you up with the smart lighting. I really highly recommend that you use that on all of your images. It's really going to set you up to a great starting point for your edit. What you're seeing on the screen right now is a page from the uh, DxO Photo Lab 4 manual, and you access that through the help menu in Photo Lab 4. If you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. And don't forget, there's some special launch pricing right now up till November 19th uh, in the year 2020. The special launch of Photo Lab 4, so there's extra savings there. You can click on my affiliate link to get there. I make a small commission. Helps out my channel. I really appreciate it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing. <laughs>